Hello fellow comic book collectors. Today I have two packs that have arrived. Uh, one was done over the weekend so I'm quite actually but I think I bought it on Saturday and it arrived yesterday or this morning. It must have been this morning. Anyway and the other one I think arrived this morning as well. Bit of a disappointment about the packaging on this. Uh, for for reason uh why and so it's packaged like this so it's got a hard cardboard on the bottom and so i wanted to go across and open it now the problem here is with this packaging it's bubble wrap it's, it's really cool it's really really well done that way but here's a problem with it and i don't you know i try not to be negative about this thing as much as i can but if have a look at what, what's happening here right so this is the front so i'm going to unwrap this and and i'm going to remove the i'm going to remove the face all right that's a bit hard because it's so taped to, to it as well so let me get my scissors so i don't cut myself while i'm trying to do this oh gee let's use a craft knife just all right so i'm trying to get the cell tape off the bubble wrap that's stuck to this cardboard base. Now I, I've asked, you know, I asked everyone who, who sends me com who I buy comics off to do this to put cardboard on both sides. I don't care if it's a cheap cardboard as long as my what I'm buying is straight. So the problem I've got here is, if you'll see, as I pull this out, right, this is the front, and I'm hoping against hope. I haven't had a proper look, but I just had a look to see what it was, and I left it for the, you know, just to this. So I'm hoping against hope that there is no marks on this comic face by the cover of it, All right? And lo and behold, despite my, my, you know, my cringiness at hoping it wasn't damaged, it isn't. Look at that. I was expecting a whole bunch of damages across the spine here because the way because it's face it's basically facing upwards into the bubble wrap so there's no hardness protection to it so if it was me i would have went like this right and i would have done, and and the great thing about it is even despite that and i was really nervous about this um because it's 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 number one of injustice gods among gods among this right from the first issue and this is a variant cover, and I know I have somewhere another cover of it, another version. So, all right, so this is the special edition um, variant. So I guess it's like the, when did it come out? Let me make sure, because it's 2014, wasn't it? 2015 it came out? 2013. So this is the, orig um, this is the original, oh, I should put it this way. So this is the original, right? 2013 variant cover version of Injustice Gods Among Us. And one of the things about this comic book is I love I love the series. There have been a whole bunch of people that have written it. But this is one of the series that like where, as you know, if you play the game, and I bought the game before, I, I think I might have bought the game before. Oh no, I read this and I bought the game. And and I played it with my nephews and stuff as well. It's just such a... Such a um, different take on the whole thing right it's it's what happened it's all about tyranny which is really worthwhile what um you know uh reading if you really want to read a really good well-written arcs and stuff like that and a lot a lot of thought has gone into this thing it's up to year five or something and they've gone into something else like they've gone into side stories now i haven't finished it i think i'm up to year three but i i do recommend reading this comic from 2013 and you know the whole series and i think there's ed brubaker brubaker has written it and some others have come on to do different arcs in it but the theme is still there and batman going up against superman and there's a reason why and it's based around the game right and the game is really good so i'm i'm really really excited that there's no damage to this because i really yeah i wanted this to be part of my other comic and but um other one that I have, which is a, I think the standard one, or I might have two versions of that same one. So that is from Trade Me here in New Zealand. It's our little eBay. 
And the next one is, like I said, this was bought on online. It was, let me see if there's a date here. 27th, right? 27th, today's the first, so within two days. And this is what, and I, and I, and I like uh, Mark 1 Comics, and this is what Mark 1 Comics, I have said this before, I really, really like Mark 1 Comics for the way they treat me. He's a, I, and even though I've, I hope I'm in the members club because I always say that I'm in the members club and so I get to pay a bit less on the on the you know um on the uh, sorry on the postage but I do love what um what Chris does when he when he sends out all these stuff for me so here you go and I haven't bought that many here's the thing so I haven't like these are like back orders like back 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 orders but I wanted these because of the covers. Like I've said, I love covers and stuff. And they're, you know, and I love getting these from him. Like this is this is Project Superpowers. And look at, you know, just the artwork on this thing. It's just so cool. I, I um yeah, I, I get blown away because it's like this is you know, the first time you see the artwork there. Look, um, you know, it's just so much cool. Somebody was talking about the other day about this, about how to get a a comic without any text on it, like a good you know cover, uh, you have to pay more. Like you have to get variant. Whereas these ones, like look, the giant head, something with the giant head of, um, you know, the demon head of Robin is chasing him, and it said it on the cover. I was like, what? Anyway, so I'll leave that alone. Oh, is there anything on the back? Yeah. So there's a you know there's more about the project superpowers. So this is from Dynamite, right? And uh, was it fractions fractured states? Who's writing this? So there's Ron Mars. I've actually met Ron Mars. He's signed a few things for me. Um, and yeah, I think he was working for Aftershock or something for a while there. But yeah, and he's done stuff like he did Voodoo, Voodoo for the New 52. And I had those signed. So I've got two copies of them. One for me and one for, um, one for, one because someday I might want to sell it, but one's got two myself, right? So here we go. Let me just lift this a bit so you get a bit more. Yep. So this is DC Connect, All right? So latest information about DC Connect. I love these because they have like little short. Sometimes they have little short make uh, stories in it. Um, you know, they've got like what's going to come out, and um, you know what variant you can get, and so on. And so at the moment, I have friends in America. I've had it for a few years, but now I'm actually utilizing them to actually buy me comics, like variant covers of comics I like. Um, last time I did that, I spent about a hundred bucks um, New Zealand, and it was paid through PayPal, where I could get specific. This is what I mean. So, like, you get the, you know, you get the little artwork. So, these should be like, these should be collectible. If, I, if it wasn't me, I collect them, but these should be collectibles because. That's when you first see the artwork. So when they go, when do they first appear? Well, they have first appeared in this man, but they always say that no, it's in the it's in the first version. So as you can see, this is Jurassic. Um, this one here's Jurassic Justice League One. All right, the artwork on there. There's Batman. There's Superman at the top there somewhere. No, there's there's Joker. All right, I heard about this. It wasn't something that I'm interested in, but this is written by who's this written by? Daniel Warren and. Daniel Warren Johnson and Juan Gideon, art by Juan Gideon, right? There's also this cool um, Andromeda from Aquaman. So, I mean, this is from, you know, this is from, um, from, um, yeah, from Mark One Comics down in Hamilton. And everything, like, I've always, you know, I've dealt with a Mark One and I've always, 99% uh, of the time has been a good deal, um, good, not deal, good working relationship and trying to get comics through them because uh, you know it's i guess you know i've never i don't know if i've ever actually met uh chris lander in person but, because i've met so many people over the years and i forget people and stuff so this is flashpoint beyond right i just wish they would just go back and re just go and do continue flashpoint ignore everything and just go back and do Flashpoint. Flashpoint is really cool. Alright. Um, is this Crush and Lobo? I have no idea who Crush is because I don't follow. Um, anyway, I don't buy, you know, 
um, comics regularly. I buy them for the covers. And, you know, because um, I, I love art. As an artist, I love art. And you're going to love what I what I got, right? This is Lois number 2 by Greg Rucker. This is a variant cover. Isn't that cool? I mean, seriously, look at that. This is, this is a beautiful cover. Um, I'm not sure who the cover artist is on this. Uh, but this is a variant cover of um, Lois Lane number 2. Let me see if there's something in the back there. I mean, I would love to get very uh, cover of number one as well. But like the artwork in this is beautiful, right? It's real. Uh, it's a brushy. It's kind of like a brush. I don't know. Noir kind of brush colored thing. It's not just standard uh, comic art styles. It's, it's you know, it's, it's really, you know, a lot of details and stuff. I enjoy these sort of artworks. I mean, I'm a fan of like Jim Lee's artwork, but some of this work here is just brilliant. If you look at it. You know, and um, it's just the colors just pop out, and the way the expressions and the brushwork and the inking. Look at that face on that. Isn't that beautiful? I think that's the cool thing. So that's why I got this because I, I got it for the artwork, but I think I'd really like to get it because it's a good, um, good, um, it looks, looks like a good art, art piece. So this is by Ron uh, Greg Rucker, who I've actually met in person. He's the one who does Queen and Country, and I have a few of those. Um, um, what was it? I've, I've got a few of those signed. But here's what something Greg Rucker said to me in 2007. I think it was 2007 or 2009. And um, this is when Armageddon, I think, might have. Yeah, is where it is now. But we were part of um, um, Arkham Comics because we just. Um, because my. You know, five page of my. The Circle was released in uh, Dealer Man Comics. And so the thing was that Greg Rucker said this amazing thing to me, right? So he said, to, he, we're talking about Whiteout, a white Whiteout. And we're talking, because I'd read Whiteout and Greg Rucker, you know, he was right next to me and there was Peter David. And I think there's somebody else, I can't remember, who's an artist. But I, I turned to Greg Rucker and said, like, what do you think? You know, you see your... Because White Out, the movie, is made here in New Zealand, right? And when you see, I can't remember, so I think the person who acted in it, it was from, oh, Kate Beckinsale acted in it, and it was made in New Zealand, right? It's about Antarctica, and it's about, this, you know, just the whole snow and stuff. And Greg, the White Out is about a detective sent to Antarctica. And I said to him, Greg, how do you feel about seeing your comic book story sold to the movies, uh, you know, to, sold to Hollywood, and they take it and they make their own version of it. And he said to me something that's kept in my head. But I think at that point is when comic books uh, suddenly were moving into they could do whatever they want once they got hold of the IP. And this is about 2009. And, you know, and, you know, White Out has a female lead, a real, you know, it's a police detective. And uh, in Antarctica, sent there because there's some deaths happening. And he said, You know, my comics um, are one thing, and so they will always be there. My stories will always be there. So if Hollywood wants to take my comics and turn it into something else, that's fine. But my comic story will always be there. And I kind of thought, Okay, that sounds pretty cool. Okay, I can understand that you as a writer, um, you know, Greg Rucker, you know, um, think that. But here we are now where IPs are basically just, they can do whatever they want with it. And I think in a sense that at the end of the day, it's a payday for the creator and the writer. But as it, it's, you know, to the, to the fans of the, of the property, do they, you know, it's like you, they, they're the ones who actually made the same, made it popular right you wrote a book like if i write a story i go here's my story and unless i have a fan base for it that story doesn't i mean doesn't become popular i don't get uh attention i don't get sales and so on and so i think it's important that uh, the fan base is respected in the sense anyway so i'm going to put this is the the variant cover i bought of um lowest lane number two because i just thought it was amazing you know just beautiful beautiful color all right, I add on that. Um, I'll put that away before I get too much fingerprints all over it. 
Next up is this one here. Kick-Ass versus Hit Girl, number one. And I'm thinking of getting the entire series. This is um, this is a sketch cover variant. I thought it was really cool. You know, um, is it who's it? Uh, um, is it? I can't remember who's the artist now. Romita, that's it. John Romita Jr. He's got a unique style, as you can see here. And the weird thing is, is Hit Girl and like Kick Ass and Hero looks like a uh, chick. Is that the thing now? Because I thought that, yeah, Hit Girl became, um, not Hit Girl, Kick Ass became a chick or something. So this looks like it's, it's a round cover, but isn't? Yeah, it looks like it's a round cover, but it isn't. All right, so it's got this weird cover on the back. And then it's got that. So, yeah, so this is cover B. But I just yeah, thought it was pretty cool. So I think I might see if I can get the entire set somehow somewhere um all right and the last one last but not least this i had to have this right catwoman isn't that cool so you can look at it like that but it doesn't make sense because she's upside down and this is a big um catwoman um from year of the villain hostile takeover Catwoman number 17. So it's from Jones. Is it Bruce Jones? Um, it's Joel Jones and Laura Alred. Um, the artwork and the interior artwork is pretty cool. Um, the weird thing, <laughs> I just didn't get this whole, um, because one of, one of the things about one of them, um, I love this. I mean, I love this, but the thing's pretty weird. So one of the things we have for one of our, you know, for uh, Red Dot, I put a I put a hole on the story because I just couldn't get get the right the right number one right, right. So I I've written the story so many times, like the script. I've got about four versions of the script, and the other night I spent another five hours saturday morning before i had to do this whole thing on saturday which was like live streams and all that and um i was up all night or was it friday night i can't remember anyway one of them i spent five hours just one whole run and wrote 22 pages i showed it to my artist and he was like still it still isn't right and i went like man this the next one is going to be number Five fifth the fifth run at it because I want this to be right and it's a co-creation it's not just my creation and I want it to be right so I'm like okay let's just not do anything right now you just stop don't worry about doing any artwork just work on some characters and stuff and um, you know and so then when I'm ready when I feel comfortable I have my head is clear I know exactly what I want then I'll be able to put down pen to paper, well, type it, and give, and then pour out a one, number one issue of, of Red Dot in the right way that, that Shane wants me to write. And so the reason I mentioned that is because of this real, this little bit here in this, in this comic, right? So he's on a motorbike. So the reason for that is because, you know, um, Red has a motorbike. Red Dot has a motorbike, right? It's got a it's got a helmet that's computerized and stuff and gives them information like nav and all that. And so I was quite taken aback because I, I haven't read recent uh, um, Catwoman books, but I bought this number 17 because the artwork and it's beautiful. It's like it's just gorgeous artwork. And um I just saw it and I was like, I want that. And um, uh, but yeah. The artwork in here is good. I think jo Laura Allred is really doing some great artwork. There's some really cool motorbike scenes. And, um, you know, and I think that's cool. And I think, I'm, you know, I, it's something I can show Shane when I'm, you know, when we're uh, sevens, when I'm working with him on Red Dot, uh, because he's, he's a great artist. So, because I still got to write this one issue as an origin because we, I've got so much ideas in my head 
but I haven't found the right, you know, I've, like seriously, I've written about a hundred pages for this comic book, but I just need to go back and write 22 pages of Red Dot and go, are you happy with this now? And uh, because at the end of the day, I, I think Red Dot is going to be a cool, cool character. And as a vigilante, he's going to, hopefully he'll take off, but I need a really hardcore thing he's got to battle. I've got all these little ideas, but I need to bring it all together into this big, huge idea because I've got all these amazing characters that I've created that I want to bring into this. Like I've got a Korean superhero that's going to come in. Uh, you know, I've got a, I've, that I've, you know, I'm working on that. Then there's a Fijian, Fiji, native Fijian who's going to come in into it and all this. It's like his own universe, right? And, um, you know, and then we've got an assassin, but, I need to write these 22 pages. And I've had Rico, you know, even come in and say, hey, man, bloody, bloody, blah, blah about this. I said, okay, yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. I'll sit down and write it. So here are the three, here are the three, this, or four, actually, this week's comic books that I've gone to. It. So this is number 17, um, Catwoman, uh, Year of the Villains, uh, variant cover, All right? This is Kick-Ass versus Hit Girl, number one, sketch variant cover. And I got it because I thought that was really cool. John Romita Jr.'s really cool artwork. Like, it's something about the artwork that really gets the um, thing. I've got a Hit Girl, um, I think, I'll bring it out. I've got a Hit Girl um, bobblehead. And I've got all the, all the, you know, all the kick-ass, um, if I haven't got the um, single issues, I have the old, you know, um, what is it called? Um, trade paperbacks. So there's that. So, and I'm a fan. I'm a fan of um, Hit Girl and thing. So this is, um, yeah, this is Lois Lane number two, variant cover. Is that cool? Um, and the last but not least is this immaculate, immaculate uh, 2013 Injustice Year One variant cover that I've been able to get my hands on. I'm like, yes, yeah. It's, I think it's this. This would be like freaking 9.8 if I, you know, if I send it away. And I wonder how much that, yeah, I got to find it. If I was going to send, I would send that one and I would send away my first appearance of um, New, um, New Mutants number 98 and my uh, first Poison Ivy and also maybe uh, my first Hawkman. Yeah. Anyway, that's it for this week. I'll see you next time, whenever next lot drops. But yeah, Kaki Tiano, wherever you are, be well.